Nina reporting from TWC. Today's guest is Jamie Delgado, Andy Murray's coach. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you very much. Um, so you've played on tour yourself. Um, can you tell us how the experience has helped develop you as a coach? I think it. I think it definitely helps that you play to a reasonable level, so you, you kind of know what it feels like to feel nervous before matches and, and prepare for events. And also after losses, you obviously feel you know quite down and. and just to understand what the player's feeling, I think it kind of gives you an extra dimension as a coach. I think there's some, there's some excellent coaches that haven't played, but I do think it just gives you that little bit extra. And um, yeah, I'm glad I, I can, you know, feel what it's like to, you know, those emotions that the yeah, players you know. feel during the matches. So I think that helps. Yeah. And then, what made you stop playing and start coaching? <laughs> well, I wasn't <laughs> playing very well, and. Um, yeah, I wasn't enjoying it so much the last couple of years that I played and, and I was really friendly with a guy called Jill Muller who, oh, yeah. who I played doubles with for a while and, and he asked me to coach him as well. Um, and after a while I kind of started really enjoying the coaching of him much more than the matches I was playing with him in doubles. So um, yeah, it wasn't something that I planned or anything like that, it just kind of happened that way and, um, and then I started travelling with him just coaching and not playing anymore. And, um, and I really enjoyed it, yeah. And I get, I mean, I got on with him really well as well before, oh, yeah, um, so that helped. And um, and his results were fortunately, you know, went well as well. So, so you know, I kind of oh, got onto a bit good. of momentum there, and, and it was really good. I really enjoyed it, yeah. Oh, that's good, yeah. Because in 2014, you played tennis, you played the Wimbledon doubles with him, and you actually um, broke the record. And <laughs> to play the, it was the 23rd match, consecutive match that you've played yeah, at Wimbledon. It, yeah, it was, yeah, someone sort of mentioned how many years in a row I'd played. And I was like, it was, yeah, it was weird because I didn't know myself. It was just sort of reminding me that I was getting on a bit into my tennis career. But it was, um, no, it's nice. I've been really lucky. I played in the juniors when I was 15. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, still loving playing in the, in the invitation. I've been invited to that, which, you know, feel very lucky. And, yeah, it's awesome to, to be involved in some sort of playing capacity, but it's, uh, I mean, Wimbledon has always been the number one event for me oh, okay. in, in the world, and, you know, any chance to play in any event there is, is amazing. Yeah, because yeah, no, you played in the Invitational last night, Yeah. doubles, and you served an ace. I did, I did, <laughs> but I'm very proud. But um, we ended up losing three, I think we had three match points and lost. But it was really good fun, and... Um, yeah, I think those invitational matches can be, you know, sometimes you're playing to the crowd a bit more and sometimes you play serious and, and the last time was really good fun because we were just playing, uh, you know, playing competitive and, and it was really good fun. So, I hope, you know, got one more match to play, so hopefully I can uh, yeah. do a bit better in that one. But no, it was really good, yeah. Oh yeah, no, it was very good. Very entertaining. And how did you become Andy Murray's coach? Um, that was in the end of 2004. 15. I was with Jill Muller at the time, and I'd been with him for a couple of years by then. And um, and there was a sort of, you know, Andy showed his interest to, to get me involved in the team, and, and um, yeah, it was a great opportunity for me. It was hard at the same time because I was, you know, Jill was coach, I was very yeah. good friends with as well, and it was going well. But no, it was going really well. Yeah. So and it's a, sorry, I mean, it's, it was my passion always to help British players. Really, yeah. it's not my. Um, what I prefer to do rather than foreign players and obviously Andy was the player that he you know is and was and such a good friend of mine as well it was you know it was a great opportunity I couldn't turn it down. Well, just a year after you started coaching him he actually had a really successful run didn't he? Yeah I mean 2016 was amazing yeah it was really intense it was really you know the pressure was high in every match that he was playing and, and matches just kept coming because he kept winning all the time and um, but it was amazing, yeah, I mean, he won Wimbledon that year, he won the Olympics, ended, uh, you know, the year world number one, which he'd never done before, and, and yeah, it couldn't have gone any better, really, so it was, uh, it was definitely a year to remember, yeah. Well, that was all thanks to you. No, I don't know about that, no, no, he was, you know, he's, but it's, you know, it's just nice to play a little part in, in someone's success like that, it was great. Mm. And then, but he's playing really well at the moment with Wimbledon, when can we expect him to be back playing competitive singles? You know the answer we don't know really because um, he still needs to get stronger um, you know and they're still in the rehab process now he's, he's done really well I think with five and a 
half months since he had the surgery, which is still really early stages, really, considering the, the you know that surgery that he had. So um, you know, the coming months we'll, we'll we'll see how he goes. But there's no, you know, he's going to play this tournament and, and that date yeah. he'll be ready because we, we actually just don't know the answer to that. So, but um, you know, hopefully it'll, it'll happen. Yeah. Well, hopefully, yeah. And then you're um, a director of Living Tennis. Um, the performance coach, yeah. coaching thing. Um, and can you tell us about that? Yeah, that's what we have in the Academy of Bisham Abbey, um, which we started you know, a few years ago now. And, and just in this last year, we became an LTA so regional centre mm -hmm. oh, academy, wow. which was great. Um, and a lot of credit goes to the coaches that are already there. I go there when I can and, and help out and, and give advice to the players and coaches. But it's, you know, the team that's there have done really well. And you've got Martin Lee and yeah. your brother Johnny. Yeah, yeah. And your dad. Well, my dad's no, he doesn't coach, thankfully. <laughs> but um, but Martin, my brother, and, and a few other coaches we have, and physical trainer, and there's a good academic school nearby. You know, Bisham's a beautiful place. It's it's a, it's a nice place to, to, to train and play tennis. Yeah. So no, that, that's gone really well. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So, and what qualities do you look for in a player to join the academy? Well, there, there's so many different ages. There's, you know, starting from under 10 years old, and there's players that are already playing at the lower end of professional tennis. I mean, I think, you know, the last, you know, two or three years, we're just trying to pe bring people in or keep people on that are, you know, showing great attitude, really, because it can have such a, an impact. Yeah, and if people haven't got a good attitude and, and are disruptive, it can really affect the whole, yeah, you know, energy of the whole mm. place and, and players and. So that, that, I think that would be the most important thing to, to have, you know, respect for people around you and we always encourage people, you know, clean your courts afterwards, be on time, all these kind of things are, are quite important. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you ever so much for joining me today. Pleasure, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. This is Nina reporting for TWC, over and out.